what's going on toy fan project piper customs here and we are back with a mother of a review and today finally after a year of having these on pre-order we got one we got it oh, what is it will there be any more of them <coughs> sir what you had there <coughs> was what we refer to as the mezco 112 collective ghostbusters box set <laughs> fuck wasting time let's go Welcome back toy fam and as you can see this box is pretty big so I've had to go for the uh, simple setup for now but don't worry we'll get back to the fancy stuff once we get the figures out but Mezco are known for their packaging and this is no exception. All right, Roo, and then you can have a look at the back and there you've got all four figures there and everything that they come with. And all of that is in this box. Yep, it's one monster set and it cost a pretty penny too. So uh, yeah, if the price of this uh, box set was the size of a Twinkie, well then... That's a big Twinkie. There's not much else going on on the sides. So here you have Mezco Toys and 112 Collective. Okay, so that's what we have all over the box. Now let's not waste time and get these fuckers open, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so once we've got the lid off, we're presented with the first layer. And the first layer is covered up with this um, this lid right here. So you pop that off and then all the top here is revealed. So you've got the four figures and you've got Slimer, Slimer stand. These here, they're not all on camera, but here's here are batteries. So obviously there's a light up feature for the proton packs, which uh, is fucking awesome uh weren't expecting that at all obviously as i've just pointed out before proton packs uh the hands for each one uh we have the sniffer here each one's got their individual head and obviously their individual accessories i.e like ray's uh trap and we've got other bits here whoops something's fallen out and we've got the pke meter which goes up there each one's got a walkie talkie as well and uh, obviously ray's goggles which look pretty mint so we're going to get into all of that individually just wanted to give you a quick look at how it all comes and then of course we have slimer straight out of the box and it looks fantastic first impressions so uh, we'll hop back and we're going to get a decent look at it in a mo but uh, yeah so this is what layer one looks like Okay, and this is a look at the second layer that's underneath, and as you can see, we've got each four of their display bases. Each one has, obviously, a display arm with a claw to keep them attached, and looks like we've got some instructions behind there. No doubt we'll have some baggies too, and then, of course, four of the proton streams. And, yeah, all really looks well presented and well packaged, so pretty happy with that. Anyway, let's move on and get a closer look at all this, yeah? All right, and here we have all four out of the box lined up looking good. Now, each one of them is on the same buck, which I believe is the Mezco Joker buck. And that's not the best, but uh, we'll see what we can do with them here at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to, each one of them obviously is pretty much dressed exactly the same, but we'll go over the differences that each one has, because there are a couple. So we'll start from this end. We'll bring in Peter Venkman, okay? All right, so let's start from the head. Now, Mezco aren't the best with their... Head sculpts, they can get a good sculpt going itself, but in terms of detail in the paint, uh, that's where it leaves lacking a little bit. So as you can see, there's not much in the way of uh, shading or tone going on in their paintwork. Um, sculpt's pretty much there, but I'm sure someone who's better at uh, painting heads than I am can do a 10 times better job with this. So there's not much in the way of uh, quality control issues going on with the head in this one. Hair's pretty much all nicely lined up, only one shade of black. Our eyes are pretty much there so yeah and also there is no head ball joint it's literally just head and neck together attached so only their neck can move at the base and that's the same with all of them including their alternative heads and we'll get into that later but going over the body itself and obviously mezco do their 112 scale uh, soft goods clothing that's what they're known for and yeah apart from <laughs> the giant zips which i know our friend tom green tom's diorams is going to uh, really enjoy ribbing into these about but uh, yeah we've got a little patch that says venkman which is cool all the stitching seems nice we've got the logo on the arm which is pretty sweet the elbow pads do they're not stitched on they do wiggle up and down on both sides and yeah it all goes nicely into the beginning of the glove now these aren't like glued in or stitched in they can move around 
and here we've got the hands which are just on a uh, ball peg okay and that's pretty malleable so they can go on with no problems the belt itself again not stitched on it can move freely and uh before we get to that let's just take it down and yeah he's wearing an undercloth uh top if you wanted to undress him don't know why you would but yeah that shows you what he's working with so zip him back up you know Oh, get some dignity going. Sorry, Venkman. There you are, all the way up to the top. Okay. So as I say, yeah, the belt is a rubber piece that is loose, and each one of them looks the same. You got your walkie-talkie holster right there. Come around to the back. The belt's nicely done, and the overalls it works well with. And each one comes with their own piss pipe. <laughs> I could have done with one of these in the cinema whilst watching Endgame um, but now I have no idea actually what this was but uh, yeah it's just a pipe which I believe is actually bendy as well there you go it's a bendy so you can bend it out of the way and that just circles all the way around <clears throat> anyway so let's carry on and stitching all the way down to here now obviously in true form as you can see the rest of them have their overall uh, legs tucked into their boots and of course film accuracy Venkman did not so we can have a look and see what we've got going under here and there you go the boot comes all the way up to reveal come on there you go and we'll get into articulation but that does swivel so that can be brought down and yeah we've got some really nice details going on with the boots themselves okay so there you go all the same but really nice detail going on with the boots okay let's put them over here that close and let's have a look at Ray. Okay, now Ray's head sculpt again, pretty much the same with the others. You know, good, good sculpt work. They pretty much got the likeness of uh, uh, what's his name, Dan Aykroyd, and you know, it was the best they could. Um, but again, very, very little detail in the paintwork in terms of shading or anything like that. One tone for the hair, all looks lined up and pretty nice though, no bleed anywhere. But um, yeah, so the eyes, mouth, all pretty standard. And again, he's got his stands label and uh, the emblem on the arm. And he himself has a holster for the trap. So that's his little difference there. He has a holster for the trap, again, with the walkie-talkie. And all looks pretty good. Going all the way down, but his boots are obviously tucked in just there. Okay, so that is Ray. And let's see if we can get him to stand up without falling over. There you go. Let's have a look at Egon. Rest in peace, Harold Ramis. Okay. Yeah, did pretty Egon pretty good, you know. He's got the likeness of Harold Ramis there. Harold Ramis, sorry. In his glasses. Look pretty cool. They've actually got lenses in, which is awesome. Um, again, obviously, they're yeah, just lacking in the paint department. But no bleed of the paint they have used on the hair. Uh, nothing wrong I see here. Got Spangler on his uh and his patch and he has a holster for the pke meter which we'll have a look at later again holster for the uh the walker toolkit now there's a silver smudge here and i can't tell whether that is quality control issue or if that's meant to be there as some sort of weathering really don't know but you know nothing a bit of black paint can fix if anyone else has got these and have that same issue if not then it's just mine but like i said black paint can get rid of that easy okay all the way down, of course, the piss pipe, bendy, and yeah, so all rocking the same gear. Nice paintwork on the zip on the boots. Okay, so that is Egon, and we're going to take a look at Winston next. So put Egon back, and Winston, bring you over here, my man. Okay, now here there is a major quality control issue. Now look at his nose. Okay, you see where it's a bit glossy. Okay, where the rest of the face is all pretty matte. Yeah. And it looks, I'll give you a point of reference, to be completely flat, as if something's come along and smushed it. But yeah, it's a complete flat, glossy spot on his nose, and I don't know why that is. If anyone else has got the same issue, please let me know. Um, but yeah, so that's a bit annoying. You know, if it weren't flat, I could easily just, you know, hit it with some matte gloss to, to take away the sheen. But I feel if I do that, it's just going to make an obvious flat spot on his nose. But we'll see. But yeah, it looks like something's just come along and just boop. Just got booped a bit too hard, which is a shame. But in terms of overall likeness, they pretty much got um, Ernie Hudson. That's it. I have to remember his name. Ernie Hudson's down. Uh, likeness down pretty good. 
okay with the skin tone and the hair again one color and obviously the details on his facial hair it's pretty sweet and actually i like the detail on the lips you know they've got lip wrinkles and wrinkles on the lips um yeah i do like that actually it's a little bit of good detail um yeah apart from that fucking glossy spot he seems to be cool you got zedemore on his uh on his patch he doesn't have any extra holsters for anything um he has no other additional accessories but yeah piss pipe and boots all looking good no other quality control issues to uh spot so there we are okay so that's the deco for all four now let's get into the fun part and look at what they all come with and before we get to accessories i just wanted to touch upon one other character that this whole box it comes with and that is slimer no, come back come back come back come back come back come back all right here we go. okay let's go over slimer so i have got him on his little display base which comes away in let me do it off camera okay okay comes away he comes like that freely we'll put him down and the space the base itself comes away in two parts okay so it's just all clear plastic so it just wiggles in it's got his own uh yeah it's got its own shape to it so it just pops in like that and this one's got a little ball on the top and that just goes in the base here okay which is really cool because he can actually move him around whilst he's on it okay which is really awesome so keeping him on this let's just go over the detail whole body is in translucent green which is wicked because you can hit it with some green light from behind and it will pop on camera and give him a nice glow but uh, for the areas they did paint obviously the eyes they got really really well and of course the mouth itself is really well sculpted and even inside the mouth you can see his tongue just in there which is sweet and of course it's translucent you can see where it's being inserted into the body <laughs> so that's pretty cool and his teeth they've really painted well it's amazing how they've got more detail on the paintwork here than they have on the heads of those but you know i'm not just nitpicking now all right but yeah they come out really look at those nasty and disgusting plaque filled teeth which is awesome then overall sculpt of slimer is really well done considering it's all translucent you know just got the blob mass and his arms as well and his arms believe it not are articulated so they can move up and down and because they're on a ball they have a little bit of up and down movement here okay so you can obviously you've got the up and down a little bit of side to side not much just a small bit i wouldn't force it otherwise it could break but it's mainly side to side hands and they swivel just slightly okay yeah hands are not uh, articulated so it's just at the arms but still it's better to have that and then good lord kim kardashian will be proud okay <laughs> so that is slimer okay um yeah i think he's brilliant really well done so i'm gonna put him to one side and get cracking on these accessories all right there you go okay so as you can see each of them come with a proton pack and each of them first thing they do get out of the way slimer because i put you in the wrong place each one comes with a walkie talkie okay there's nice paint work there on the knobs and the dials okay good sculpt on the walkie talkie not much paint other than the dials and they each can fit in their hole so let's have a look at that quick let's take winston because he's right here okay and spin it around come on there you go and that just slides right in holds it quite nice it's pretty loose it's not tight or anything you know so it will fall out but uh where'd that go there you go but uh, yeah, it does hold it quite nice anyway. So each one, each figure comes with a walkie-talkie. All right. So let's put them here and have a look at the proton packs themselves. Now these are where Mezco's detailing expertise come into effect because these are absolutely amazing. All right, look at the detail. Look at the dry brushing of the silver on the edges alone just to give it some wear. And all the pipe work and the cabling here which is, uh, you know, it's pretty stiff, but can flex a little bit. So, yeah, and all just with the red piping, the hose pipe here, which is all crinkled, and the detail around the box. Yeah, this is absolutely amazing and well done. Okay, spin it around, and you've got the, uh, the cage that uh, houses the straps on top. More dry brushing there, even with the little label. It comes with a little warning label. Can't read that, I'm into 
All right. And the wand itself is amazingly well detailed. Again, more warning labels. <laughs> Just in case they've, you know, crossed the streams. And yeah, that looks awesome. Let's have a look at the wand for a second. So it's attached here on that groove. Okay, so that just slides on like that. And just hold there. And this whole stretch of cable here for the, the wand itself, come on, is actually bendy wire. All right, so it can bend and you can manipulate it into any pose or position you want. Now, I'm not a fan of that at all. Uh, just pure, I get what they were going for, obviously, so you can pose the hose any way you want. But with all you know, bendy wire, eventually inside it is going to deteriorate and break. Okay, I would have preferred it just, just an empty bit of loose hose, plastic hose, just like um, the skin for uh, cables, just from here to there. And obviously, yeah, you can you know manipulate it with some heat, but you know at least you know it ain't gonna break with a wire inside. All right, so that's me only. It's one of the gripes I have with the hose. You know, the you know itself. I can get it to damn focus. You know, it's got some good texture to it, as you can see. Okay, it's got that. Uh, I don't know what you call this texture, but you can see it nonetheless. All right, so that's just. I'm a bit worried about that over time. Okay, so let's just. Hooking back up, and the only other gripe with these is that the straps themselves of the backpack, these should not have been rubber. These should have been elasticated ribbon. And I will tell you why, okay? Because they're not the easiest, I can imagine, to, let's just let that hang loose, to uh, stretch and move out the way to get them onto the back. Okay, so here, it's a very fragile area, okay? where this bit of metal pipe in here meets into here, that is an area where it could break. So you can see the slide, the straps, they slide. They slide up and down, okay, just like that. But because it's rubber, they can stick, you know, just, just again, just stick slightly. And you'll think, you know, a little bit, it's, it's one of these things that puts the fear back into a uh, collector. And us as toy photographers, you know, we, we're used to the, um, the movement and the limitations that some of these figures uh, have in different brands, we're used to them, you know, because we're, we're toy photographers, we, we pose them up, we know how to handle them, we know how to look after them. So very rarely do we get a figure from a wave that we're used to that actually puts that fear back into us that, you know, any kind of you know, manipulation or any wrong move and that's it, something's going to break. And it does happen. You know, sometimes the excitement gets the better of us and we just do something out of uh, character that we know from what we learn and then bang, something snapped. And sometimes we don't even have to barely touch something and it breaks. So that there is a worry and something I'm to have to be very careful with and aware every time I go to uh, pose these things up or remove or take off the proton pack. And another area to be wary of, especially with the straps, is right here. Now you see obviously where this clasp meets the, uh, the shoulder strap. And if you can see in there, right there, if I can get it to down focus. Uh, where are you? There, you see that? Okay, that little square cutout section, that's where it ports in. Now that, I can imagine being very, very, um, you know, just fragile if you overstretch the straps that could pop. Obviously that's where the assembly line have put it together themselves uh, and they've just ported uh, this bottom section of the strap into the shoulder part. Okay, so it's just another weak area that uh, you need to be aware of when um, manipulating the straps to get it onto the figures. So I just wanted to go over that. Okay, so yeah, they can just fold out the way. Both of the straps can slide down. And here we have a belt buckle. Again, this is a stiff rubber. Let's get the one out of the way. And that can just clasp around and then just slide through uh, around the figure's belly. It will actually do so for me. There you go. Boom. Okay, and that will keep the proton pack on, on the figure. And each one is exactly the same. And each one has a light up feature. And this is the button for it, right here. I haven't put the batteries in yet, but the battery pack is just there. So I'm gonna do that right now. And before we get into putting the batteries in, just wanted to show you them. Okay, so you've got 12 batteries there, three for each. And yeah, just looks like the general watch batteries. Okay. Okay, let's get the trusty screwdriver. You don't need to see me do that. You know how a screwdriver works. So three, two, one, 
before we get there just to make sure just in case you have any trouble putting the batteries the right way around they have given you a picture on the inside of the flap to show you just that okay boom we are in locked and loaded okay so all three batteries are in and not gonna lie that was a struggle you know tiny fiddly little batteries in this tiny little hole but got them in tightened up now let's have a look and see what we're working with all right let's get ready switch me on here we go in three two one boom look at that nice okay so the four lights here and of course we've got the level blue gauge here that's fucking awesome all right yeah loving that and can you see can you see the light <laughs> yeah even the one tip lights up now i know why this the cable itself is flexible because it's an actual cable okay so i take back everything i said on that obviously if it was just a bendy wire my point still stands but it's not it's actually an actual actual i've said actual too many times wire boom that is seriously cool okay so yeah that let's have a look with the lights off so i'm going to turn it off which is like that and i'll turn it back on again with some light off that should be enough to get it to glow and yeah that's lovely do you know what that ain't enough no that ain't enough hold on that's better nice there it is folks okay mezco you get a massive massive thumbs up from me on this all right there's another little light in there too didn't even realize unless that's just where paint scratch and it's be you know peering through i have no idea but i'm just excited so before i run the batteries out let's get some more lights on and these off okay that's sweet as hell all right, so I'm looking forward to getting the batteries on all of those and having them all lit up for a wicked toy shop. But moving along from the Proton Packs, so let's just hook this bad boy back up. Yeah. Okay, moving on to Ray's Trap. Let's bring him forward. Okay, so this is what we're working with. Now, the cord itself, I believe, yep, yeah, it is on a bendy wire also. Now, obviously, the point I had with the proton pack before I realized it actually was a wire. This is in fact just a bendy wire and my point for that is valid on this in which I wish it could have been just a regular piece of uh, hollow cord or pipe, you know, just a plastic sheath. Um, it doesn't need to be coiled up like this again because this can deteriorate and break. And there is no wire in this. Um, there is no light up features in the trap, although that would have been awesome. But uh, yeah, and unfortunately my other biggest gripe is the trap doesn't open at all that's just sculpted flat which is a damn shame you know but anyway moving on to the details uh, it's sculpted really well got some nice details there paintwork on it is top notch let's go around to the other side some more great detail there and onto the back come on focus you can there you go more warning label can't read that there you go and of course the cord and the pedal with some more warning labels and stuff on there. Paintwork is really, really nice. But yeah, so that is the trap. Nicely sculpted, nicely painted. Just a letdown, as it is just a static piece. I actually have with me one of the traps from the one of the Diamond Select figures from Ghostbusters. So let's bring that in and have a quick comparison. Okay, so this is one of the traps that came with the Diamond Select figures. Okay, and that's what I mean. Just some plain old tubing that you can manipulate yourself I think would have been better rather than uh, the springy cord and the bendy wire but let's just compare traps okay so size wise Mezco one is slightly smaller okay details are pretty much similar apart from this one's handles bent but this is a, a rubber plastic whereas this one's solid okay the Diamond Select one's got more paint detail on it, as you can tell from the front. Okay, and the sides, yeah. Diamond Select one looks like to have a lot more detail underneath too. And that's how they look. 
Okay, so let's have a look at the pedals. Obviously, I'm slit one a lot bigger. Nice detail here with the translucent, and clearly that's where a light's meant to be. But yeah, so there's the differences between the two. Let's get into focus. So yeah, a little comparison between the two different ones. Okay, moving on to Ray's goggles now, which are here. And we'll have a look at those on his head, but first up close. Okay, very nicely detailed. Exactly, pretty much bang on how it is in the movie. And I believe either that's just some gloss black paint there, or they're actual lenses. I can't tell. Either way, it looks cool. It's cool as shit, actually, yeah. That's really, really nice. All painted really nicely. Looking mint. So, let's have a look on his head. Bring him forward. Okay, so... To avoid paint rub, as it looks like it's going to be a tight fit, I suggest just easing them on from the back, just dropping them on, just, yeah, it's quite tight, so just tease it, so all you've got to do is just tease it on, excuse me, that is my spat, my screwdriver falling off my desk, okay, just tease it on, no need to go absolutely mental, so there, we got the look of when he's just got them resting on his head, put you into frame, Okay, they will go all the way down onto his eyes, but I just wanted to get this look first. Okay, so that's just him resting on the head, and if we tease it a bit more, there's no need to rush. I can bring the front down, okay, just tease it on the back, bit by bit. Alright, Roo. And they should sit snug on his head. There you go. See? Looking good. Just straighten them up a bit. Yeah. Boom. All right, Roo. So that's how they look on his head. And to take them off, I suggest it coming from the back. Just with you now, just bringing it up. Okay. Just teasing it off ever so slightly. No need to rush. And then there you go. No paint rub. All good. So that's how the goggles look on his head. Spying into your very soul. Let's put those down. Let's see if Ray will actually cooperate and stand up for me. Good boy. And have a look at Peter Venkman's sniffer, which is over here. Uh, yeah. And this is a device he used to uh, obviously go around Dana Barrett's apartment, but he wasn't in his overalls and he was just in a regular, you know, uh, civilian clothing. So I think they just. I'm not sure why they gave him this accessory. I guess it's just because they wanted to give someone an accessory. Now, is that a bend? Or is that bend meant to be there? I don't know. But anyway, mine's bent. That's how it came out of the packaging. Not sure if that's meant to be like that. I can't honestly remember from the movie. Um, or if that's just a quality control issue on my part. Let me know if you've got these and there's a bend there. Now, what is that? A little glossy bit right there. I've got a feeling, obviously it's right where the bend is, so I've got a feeling that's just on mine, and it is actually a bend with the sniffer, which is a shame. Again, the quality control, but let's move on to the other barriers. So we've got, uh, just like that's a, a warning label that's been worn off, so that's a nice little detail. Obviously the pump. And um, yeah, spin it around. More warning labels that have got some wear on them. So this is a nice accessory. Um, not really a necessary accessory, but it would have been nice if mine wasn't bent already. So I'm not going to attempt to straighten that because I guarantee it will pretty much snap. This is got some flex to it, but not much. So be careful on this. There's an area that could break. Clearly, mine is on the verge of doing so. So let's put him down. Okay. Now let's try and have a look at getting one of these proton packs on. Okay, so I've gone with Venkman and the pack that already has the batteries in just for why the hell not and Venkman is my favorite so let's have a look at this let's first take the wand away and bend it well out of the way and then what we're going to do move you aside sir is we're going to just move these straps down so we're going to bring them down first just very carefully it says on camera so just bring them down and out and open right so they're wide open the belt's already undone we can move that out of the way like so Okay, so that's the pack prepped. Now with the body, obviously his articulation is very restricted because of the cloth clothing. We'll get into that uh, when we go over articulation. 
So we're just gonna bring his arms back slightly here. Okay, and we're gonna do this very, very, very carefully. Okay, so we slide one in, and just with a little push, we're gonna slide the other in, and we're just gonna wiggle it in gently on both sides, as you can see, that's as far as we go. And then we're just gonna slowly tease them up. Okay, this is where the elastic straps would have been better. Okay, so you wouldn't have to have too much of that fear about possibly breaking them. Okay, and once we get to the shoulders, just getting to about there, then we can start sliding these back up the metal rods. Of course, because they're rubber, they're sticking already. So let's just gently tease this one up as we go. Okay, so there we go. It's starting to tease its way up now, as you can see. All right. And then with that, as it's coming up, we can slowly start bringing the arm down. Just bring that up and over. Okay. And then we do the same with this side. Start teasing it just a little bit. There she goes. All right, as you can see, it's sliding up. Kevin. Yeah, let's reach just the thing. The rubber's getting stuck now. Just gotta be careful. There she goes, teasing it away. That's it, that's it. And we start bringing this arm down. Okay, just a little bit more till it reaches the, the top. And wham, she's on. Okay, so it is a little bit of a ball lake to get on and off, but, and it is one of those situations where once you've got them on, you don't really want to take them off. Okay, so which is a shame. Again, why I emphasize why these should have been elasticated. So we just bring the, bring the arms out slightly and then we can get the midsection belt round. So we just unfold it. It wears me out a bit there. There she is. Come on. Let's peel that away. It's coming, it's coming. There it is, okay. And because he's got a bit of a belly on him, let's see how well this actually fastens. So it's extremely difficult to do this on camera. Okay, it's being a bit fiddly. In fact, I am going to take this away. So there is the belt securely on him. I just do it off camera because obviously it is a bit fiddly to do whilst you're trying to do it in front of a camera. Well, this is how it looks with the backpack on. Pretty goddamn mint, if you ask me. Yeah, so let's fire this bad boy up again. Boom. Nice. Turn it off. Okay, spin him around. Now, with the pack, probably going to ask, is he a bit back heavy? Slightly, yes. Um, so he's standing up right now, which is good, but I do have his feet kind of leaning forward slightly. So just to compensate for the added weight of the pack. There you go. Okay. There you have it. So it looks. And as we've got Peter here, I thought it'd be great to segue into the hands. Now, each one comes with uh, three pairs of hands. They have the fists on them in the pack. And then each one comes with a set of relaxed hands and then a set of wand gripping hands, okay? And they're pretty easy to change. All right, so let's, with that, let's try the wand gripping hands. Let's get them both out. Do do do. It's that one and that one. Put them to the side and let's have a look. Uh, Peter, right now, so these get your piss pipe out of the way. Okay, these just pop straight off. Okay, hands themselves are pretty malleable, so it won't take too much to get them off. All right, yeah, apart from this one, which there you go. Okay, let's pop them down. All right, let's have a look at the pegs and let's see what these hands look like when they're on. So, this is that one, as you can see, the holes there. The peg itself is pretty thin, so obviously, do take some care when. Uh, putting the hands on and off all right so with that we just wiggle it on because obviously the hands out of the packaging uh not obviously that malleable uh obviously straight out of the packaging so we're just gonna ease it on without breaking the peg he says come on you little shit boom there she's on now okay the peg itself can move up and down and swivel so that's one hand on let's get the other one all right, same again, put hole and pop it in. Okay, and there it is. That's the other port hole hand on. 
Now he's got two gripping hands. Let's see how well he holds the wand. Let's get that off. Let's bring the wand round. So he's got obviously some grips there. And then grips on that side. All right, so let's try and get them in the hands. Yeah, so I found putting the hands on the wand first and then putting them onto the pegs was the best way of doing it. And now he's ready to bust some protons into some poltergeist colons. Bars. All right, so now let us see how the whole team looks all suited up. Okay, before we get to putting the pack on Egon, I just remembered I forgot to go over his PKE meter, which is the accessory that he comes with. Okay, and this thing is extremely well detailed, as you can see there. You know, you've got the uh, the green tracking grid, uh, sensor there, all the buttons are painted. Okay, it's going to the back. It looks like a microphone from the back, but the coolest part is, if I can do it here, yeah, the sensors pop out, a little bit of flashing under there. Actually, it's not flashing, I guess they're just ports or something, I don't know. But anyway, these can open up and, uh, yeah, come on, focus your shit. As you can see, when one moves, so does the other. So that's pretty awesome. Although the annoying thing is, they can make this open up, but they can't make the fucking trap open. Really, Mezco? You give us this and not this? That is just pure and utter laziness. I would have paid more for that. But at least we've got something that opens up anyway. So that's pretty awesome. So let's close this back up and get the final pack on Egon. Okay, remember I was telling you about that weak point in the strap where the strap meets the bottom. And you can just see it there. See that little square area where the assembly line is put together. And it's a weak point. So to be careful with it when you're putting it on the figure. Yeah, well, guess what? Yep, that happened. So... No way, no better way of uh, telling you about a weak point than actually demonstrating it accidentally. So that is an absolute shame, unfortunately. But you can see, once I've got it in here, you can focus, that there are two portholes there. And on here, there is a porthole too. There's a peg. So obviously it's meant to peg into each other, but, you know, not meant to come out. At first I thought, okay, this is a part that comes away and an easier way of getting the straps on but no because there is actually a little bit of glue residue so obviously this uh, assembly and they've glued it on come on focus sorry let's get the wand out of the way it's doing my head in so yeah anyway gladly it's not a break uh, so much so it's just a part of the joint that came away and it can be ported back in it will need to be glued back I've tried getting it back on with just pegging it and it just pops straight out. So it does need gluing back, which is a pain in the ass, but at least there's nothing broken. Um, so it can just peg back in and then just with a little bit of uh, tacky glue, contact adhesive, um, that can flex will probably do the best stuff. But yeah, see, even with someone like me who can, you know, has experienced handling this and does it very gently, um, sometimes, you know, you just get bad luck which is unfortunate. And to sum up my reaction to this, it's a great segue into the next part, which is going over the alternate heads. Okay, so each one, each figure has an alternate head and each one is a scary face. So seeing as Egon's pack broke, let's have a look at his scary face with better detail on here. Can we see some frayed hair draping down onto his forehead? Okay, so some good details on the inside of the mouth. Not too bad, obviously glasses they're the same as his regular head lenses on the inside and uh yeah all pretty good no quality control issues here and looks pretty sweet and let's try it on him as you can see this just pops straight off there you go and it's just pops straight on there you go finally got there so that's how he looks with his alternate head and my exact reaction to his fucking pack but let's not digress into that again and next we have Winston's head. And as you can see, there is no glossy flat spot on the end of his nose here. Okay, so, yeah, a lot better. Such a shame that it happened on him, on this head. Let's bring him up close, actually. So we can compare the two. Yeah. That's how it should have been. Damn you, Mezco. Your figures look nice, but your quality control is absolute fucking shit. Pardon my French. So going over it again, the eyes are painted real nice. Again, the inside of the mouth is painted lovely. Some facial hair with his moustache. Yep, 
all done, no quality control issues on this one. So let's try it on. Let's get the head off, pop this one on. There, lovely. And that's how he looks like. When he's seen shit that will turn you white. Going on to Venkman's head, now this one looks a bit more animated than it does actually Bill Murray, which is a shame, don't think they've nailed the likeness of Bill Murray on this one, uh, nowhere near as that one, uh, really nicely detailed, inside the mouth is done okay, again very little detail on the paint, but what can you expect, um, but yeah, no quality control issues to see, it all looks alright, let's try on, okay, come here you bitch. Alright, you wrote that's on, and there you go. And he's about to get slimed. And lastly, we have Ray. This one has got a bit of a Dan Aykroyd look to him, more or less capturing the moment when he sees Slimer and he's got a fag hanging out of his mouth. Okay, so let's bring him over and compare. I've got the goggles on him, so yeah, it's a nice little touch just giving us those expressions. And again, bringing him into detail. Not much going on. The hair paint all looks okay, no quality control issues, all good. So let's have a look with it on. There you go, looking good. Let's try and with the uh, with the goggles on. Okay, so here you have him with the alternate head on and the goggles, and they fit quite good. Uh, best thing to do with the goggles when fitting them on this head is to put them on here, the head forehead first, and then put the strap over the back, and then just fiddle it down. Obviously, because you've got a giant quiff and it hooks inside the goggles nicely. All right, so there we are. All you need now is a cigarette. Silver lining being, with this pack not being able to go on to Egon just yet, I can take the time to go over some articulation. Moving on to articulation, let's start with the head, bring him forward. Okay, as I said before, there is no uh, single head joint, it's all attached to the neck, so the joint itself is right at the base, so he can look that far forward, uh, that far back, and obviously side to side, and crack in the neck, and that's the same for all of them. All right, so that's the head. For the shoulders, they can come up about that far on both sides. The joints are a bit stiff, Obviously, it's a brand new figure. Obviously, all the articulation will be hindered over the uh, because of the the uh, soft goods overalls. Okay, so there is a little bicep swivel in the arm. Won't be able to rotate it too much. Okay, and as the shoulders down, they can come up about this far. I wouldn't go any further than that because you'll risk tearing the fabric. And they can go back about that far. Okay, so the arm out. There is a single joint at the elbow. All right, which the elbow pad covers nicely. All right, so single joint at the elbow. There is no wrist swivel, but with the hands, we can go up and down and swivel itself all the way around. Okay, and that's the same for both arms. Okay, it feels like he does have some sort of diaphragm up here. It's hard to move, but definitely has waist swivel. Okay, so waist swivel is right there. It will spring back because obviously the belt and the overalls. All right, okay, before we move on to legs, I just want to show you what the PKE meter looks like in the holster. All right, so that's the holster for it. And yeah, you can just sit there. You can go a bit further down. There you go, just sits in there nice and snug. And of course, drop the walkie talkie in uh, that way. And then boom, it's good to go. Okay. Just quickly show you that I have the trap holstered in with Ray. I found this is sort of the best way to get it all tucked away. So I just unraveled one of the uh, the coils, and, uh, hooked the rest over the uh, handle of the trap, and then uh, wrapped round a uh, wrapped round one. Uh, so the pedal just sits flush on the side there and looks pretty tidy, and just keeps it all nice and neat and out of the way. Okay, moving on to the legs. Legs can come about. That far, not bad for a Mezco, that's not a bad Van Damme at all. Okay, but it's about that far. All right, with the restriction of the cloth, you can kick out about that much and go back about that far. There is a double joint at the knee, which is not restricted because of the cloth. All right, just slightly, you see it's just peeking out of the boot, but as soon as you bring it back, it's all good. Well, I think I have actually overdone mine. <laughs> I have to try and tuck that back in. Anyway, 
the ears boot swivel and the foot can go back that far you can come up this far and there is a slight rocker not much okay so standing can be a bit of a pain because obviously with these boots they are curved upwards all right and on Ray, he has a case of one leg is shorter than the other, just slightly. So he is an absolute pain to stand up, which is, uh, which is unfortunate. But for the most part, they can. Okay, just got to be careful. And yeah, so that is the articulation for them all. All will be the exact same as they're all sharing the same buck. Right, so with that, let's have a look at some size comparisons, yeah? Okay, moving on to some size comparisons, and here we have Egon, and he is next to the Janine Melnitz and Goza from the Diamond Select range. And here we have Winston, and he is next to the Diamond Select Librarian Ghost, and the Diamond Select version of Winston. And you can tell there's a stark difference between the two in size and in quality and detail. And here we have Ray, and he is next to the Marvel Legends Avengers Endgame Captain America, and the Mafex John Wick. And here we have Peter Venkman, and he is next to the SH Figure Arts Doctor Strange and the NECA SDCC Ninja Turtles Raphael. And here we have all four Ghostbusters next to Slimer. That's something about the street setting, it's not working for me. I need to change it up a little bit. Boom! Much better. Rooftop setting. Definitely more fitting for Ghostbusters than there's just a back alley streetway. Yeah, if only I had the... Um, Diamond Select Ghostbusters rooftop diorama from the first movie. I only have literally pieces of it, uh, only a handful. So if anyone out there has got any spare bits, let me know, hit me up, and we'll work something out. Desperate to get that completed, even though it's fucking huge. But anyway, yeah. I can't really decide on how much I like this set versus how much I wish it could have been better. I'm going to need a second opinion here, guys. Oh, for fuck. Fuck's sake, you haven't bought them as well, have you? Look at the zips! Look at the size of them! Oh, they disgust me. What's up, Ben? How's it going, mate? Yep, yeah, so... My take on these Mezco Ghostbusters, they outstretch out straight out of the box. They are a pretty good figure, actually. I'm uh, liking them a lot. I love the detail. Um, you know, just the the name badges, the proton packs. You know, they they they're really smart. Um, just you know, not too many QC issues straight out of the box. But uh, I'm a bit a bit knocked about all these bloody um, scared faces. You know, just looking at Egon here. He could have easily come with a um, a smirking face. I think that would have been amazing. There's some good shots in that film where he's just smirking away to uh, you know to some of the stupid comments that uh, Peter makes. And I think they would be a, that would be an amazing touch. You know, everybody had um, sort of the same normal face, but every single one had an individual sort of uh, personality face. But apart from that, yeah, no, these are really cool. Um, I'm loving these a lot. You know, I've done, done a couple shots now. Um, what else can I say about them? You know, I, I thoroughly recommend if you're a Ghostbusters fan, yeah, man, these are definitely for you. These are awesome. Um, obviously, set out Egon here. Just look at him now. He's still just as smart as when I opened the box. And I got to try to look at that. I love it, loving that, loving the LEDs, you know, simple things. Please, simple minds. What can I say? This is a brilliant figure. Um, do not regret getting these ones at all. You know, he's gonna he's gonna stand up for me. Is he? Yeah, look at that. The oh, flowers oh, are yeah. still thin. Here we go. Do what you like. There we go. Let's see if I can see him a bit. There we go. Nope. There, there he is. Look at that. Eventually, I got him stood up. Um, yeah, no. Thoroughly recommend him. What do you think, and Ben? What's your opinion, mate? show off the very last accessory, couldn't think of a better setting than the rooftop, is the Proton Stream. Okay, translucent, with some lovely little details on it. So we're going to take Peter here and see how he looks. 
Okay, here we have the proton stream attached to the wand. And these don't look too great, to be honest. They're quite thick. And the translucency is, is quite light. So when you hit it from behind with some, say, yellow or orange light, it's not going to pop as, like, as you can see, Slimer is right now with some green light behind him. You know, so uh, these aren't really that effective when it comes to, uh, to lighting up, unfortunately. But uh, hey-ho, it is what it is, and we got what we got. So um, light painting it is. And of course, by light painting, I mean laser pen. Okay, far more effective when you adjust your camera settings and capture the beam in all one massive streak. I also play racquetball. Do you have any hobbies? Shout out to Carl from Plastic Action UK for hopping on and giving his final thoughts. And to answer your question, my final thoughts are, well, I'm split down the middle. As a toy photographer, I'm not afraid of no ghosts, but I'm definitely afraid of these figures. They're not the friendliest of sorts, unfortunately. Uh, definitely with a lot of QC issues and the putting the fear back into you in terms of mobility and posing. And of course, the accessories being as fragile as they are, you don't really want to handle them too much in fear of breaking them. But... Unlike Egon, my parents did believe in toys and Ghostbusters were one of the first franchises that I actually fell in love with. So as a collector at heart too, these are an absolute must have and a dream to own. So there you have it, there's a split for you. If you're a collector and a Ghostbusters lover, get on these ASAP. But if you're a toy photographer, then I would think twice if I were you. And that is a wrap. Thank you so much for putting up with this monster long review. You are an absolute champion if you made it all the way to the end. And if you did make it all the way to the end, drop a comment with uh, Ben stop being a dick and wasting my time with your hour long reviews. I've got shit to do. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching guys. If you could hit the hat trick of like, subscribe and notification bell to stay up to date with my latest content, that would be awesome. I am on social media on Facebook and Instagram at Project Piper Customs. Be sure to stalk me on all my latest toy photography and custom projects coming up. And if you're on Facebook, please do check out Toy Comics Inc. If you're an up and coming toy photographer, there's some great toy art to be inspired by and weekly competitions, so definitely worth checking it out. And also, if you want to learn more of the craft, then definitely head on over to the Plastic Action UK website for more tricks and tips and all the latest news on all the latest figures drop in within the UK. And that will do it for me. I think I've made you suffer enough. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks again for watching. And until next time, if it's up to us, we've got to take control. <laughs>